Greetings, everyone, and welcome to Anime Night in the Dojo. Today's featured show, that time I got reincarnated as a slime. Season 3. Hi, uh, yep, slime. Season 3, episode 14. Welcome back to the dojo. I'm Ryu. It's Age. We're back for more Anime Night in the Dojo. And, well, um, we do have a dub this week. So uh, we're kind of on a week-to-week -week basis with uh, pretty much everything right now after the uh, random hiatus. Or not really hiatuses, but because of the Olympic coverage and stuff like that, Japan did some stuff and that might have affected dubbing and whatnot. So uh, as it stands right now, uh, next week's episode is not dubbed yet, but um, that's how it was last week and we're still here. So we'll just have to see. <laughs> yeah, it might be coming out literally the, the day we usually record stuff or, or the uh, day after uh, our second day recording. So uh, we'll just have to see. So if there's slime, we'll have slime. If there's no slime, then we won't have slime or whatever show it may be, uh, outside of Demon Slayer, which I believe should be fine, because that sub is completely done. So I assume they'll just, you know, churn through it and not have to wait on anything. But uh, anyway, as for slime, hey, look, some blueprints. We, we talked about blueprint, the blueprints last week. Um, here's some more. So I guess that's where we're going. We had the severely melodrama queen last week as well. Um, so it'll be interesting to see, uh, how she comes into the story and based on, uh, <laughs> based on what the Slime Isekai's Memories game is doing for its latest event that started, uh, last night, uh, one of the things that we talked about as a potential thing that was going to potentially happen is going to probably be a thing. I don't know if they're going to do it in the actual show, though, if it's going to be like a Slime Diaries thing or if the stuff that happens during that event uh, that Fuse wrote into the game is just game only, but uh, we will see how much of that translates to the show because it still seems fairly canon to the show based on what is going on. So uh, I'll be interested to see how much of that actually appears in the actual show, considering uh, the majority of the stuff from the Holy Knight stuff was also in the show. So uh, not all of it that was in the game was in the show, but uh, most of it was. So. Uh, yeah, there could be some uh, pretty hilarious stuff coming up here. So uh, we all know how I enjoy comedy. So <laughs> anywho, um, festival prep continues. That's where we're at. Um, waiting on delegations, whatnot. The invitations went out. Plans are being made. Rami Riss is going to have her own dungeon, that kind of stuff. Cool stuff's happening. We got another gob. So, yeah, like I said, I know we're going to get at least one or two more. Indeed. So we'll just have to uh, see uh, who comes out of that, uh, the gob squad there um, from all the like original uh, goblins from the, uh, the initial part of the series. But um, yeah, we're just going to continue. You, you guys see the uh, <laughs> you see the detail work here on on this? How many Rimuru's are in this blueprint? Count them. <laughs> Rimuru might, might not want all this branding, but man, he is even there in, in more subtle ways. So it's getting out of control. The, the amount of Rimuru everywhere is just really impressive. This is like rival, rivaling the like Caesars in like, you know, ancient Rome of where they put themselves. This is like... Caligula levels of nonsense. <laughs> so, yeah, it'll be interesting to see when these uh, final designs come through and what the buildings actually look like. I'm sure the orcs will have it built, you know, overnight because just how they roll. But, um, yeah, um, we talked about potential Valdora stuff coming up here, so that might also be coming up. But, uh, pretty much everything we've talked about up until now in the last couple weeks, just the festival shenanigans. So that's that's all we got. So let's go ahead, push some buttons, and uh, hopefully we don't get another massive meeting. So here goes some. I'd expect something like this to take a few years at least. Yeah, I suppose that makes sense. It's pretty crazy to expect to get all this construction done in just a month. At least that's what we said at first. I'm just as surprised as you. You guys are nearly done. We had a lot of help. Yeah. <laughs> we heard you could use some extra hands to get this arena of yours built in time for the festival.
Oh, that's convenient. <laughs> Man, I gotta hand it to you, Romiris. Your skill small world really is something. Your ability allows you to pick up a huge area and place it into a labyrinth. Oh, wow, that's smart! In that case... Ah, uh, yeah, and if I do that... Oh, that's what I'm talking about! I like it! Just leave it on the me, okay? There's no rush. Take as many breaks as you need. <laughs> After hearing such an awesome idea like that, I'm gonna give it everything I've got! <laughs> okay, next up. And before you know it, Tempest will be world famous! <laughs> that sounds like a great plan. Let me give this to you before so I so he literally is just built in the finally finished creating the right. blade that you requested, Lord Rimaru. It won't break or bend. I made it to be extremely durable, so it'll adapt to your magic capacity. So if you brought Veldora here, that means... Oh yeah, he bought it. Hey, of course Veldora. he did. I don't even need you to know what it is. What is it? As you can see, I'm quite busy. Well, if you say so. And just when I found a place for you to live... To hold on, a place for me to live? Regardless, this works out since Veldora was in need of a place to release his aura. All the high-density magicules he emits will create monsters and the dungeon will be filled to the brim in no time! And the levels closest to him will have the highest density and spawn the strongest monsters! Mm. Who knew you had such a bad mm. boy streak kicking him like mm. that? I could say the same of you! Uh, tell me, Romiris, how's the dungeon coming along? Pretty good, all things considered, but I've only made 15 floors so far. You're... And I bet we all wish interior decorating was that easy. It looks even better than I imagined. Impressive, huh? I am rather amazing. You've certainly outdone yourself this time, Romiris. What is that door? Hey, Rimuru, you think you could get me furniture like that, too? Of course! You've been working your butt off for me. I'll have it made for you right away. Whoa. It's done. The question now is, how do we safely confirm that it even works? Oh, I've already done that. I tested it out on Veretta. See? Hmm. Hmm? I'm so sorry. <laughs> so, feeling alive and stuff? Yes. The time has finally arrived. I'll be able to let loose and unleash my aura. You sure you guys, you guys want to be standing like right there? Right. <laughs> Here I go. Opportunity to make money, do you? Now that that said country isn't being poisoned, yeah, that's a good idea. As long as you're in the labyrinth, you can unleash it as much as you want. But under no circumstances are you to release it outside. <laughs> yeah, then Belzard might notice you. Well, now that we've solved Veldora's aura problem, I've accepted it. It's done now. I hope that you'll continue to protect Imagine Romulus stuff being easy and not convoluted. What I kind of crazy nonsense is this? I swear it on my life. I can't believe Beretta's officially become one of my servants. This is wonderful. I'm not alone now. <laughs> but Lady Romulus, aren't you forgetting about somebody? Whoops, sorry. I believe simple traps such as pitfalls are among the most effective. Who are you, Team Rocket? Oh, yeah, we can do all of these. <laughs> really? That's great. Way to go, Romiris. It's my labyrinth, so setting up these traps will be child's play for me. Primaru, why don't you?
don't you just capture a bunch of fire and ice dragons and bring them here? Huh? What was that last bit? <laughs> In fact, I can have them for you if you're busy. Wait, what are you doing here? Malim? <laughs> Showing up unannounced just like you did before. <laughs> like it was basically her shtick. Um... So I guess we know where Asterius went to go get Swole. He just kind of hopped worlds, right? Because this is literally just the Tower of Babel from Don Machi. <laughs> yeah. it, to be fair, nobody has a freaking monopoly on creating a giant labyrinthian dungeon, okay? <laughs> then every other roguelite game would be considered old hat. <laughs> As it stands, the only real difference between the freaking the dungeon and Don Lachi and this is just the fact that you know in this Romulus is the dungeon master, whereas in uh, in Don Lachi the dungeon itself is sentient. Right. So, <laughs> R Rimuru is in charge of this one entirely. Uh, the adventurers in Don Lachi can absolutely die in that dungeon trying to delve its steps and whatnot. Uh, so, you know, th this is more of a, uh, a tourist attraction than a, uh, you know, what some people do for a living. So you yeah. could legitimately do this for a living. This is like, I don't know. What do you even compare that to? <laughs> well, so the thing is that the dungeon is still going to be like a legit dungeon. Because all the monsters are real. Are going to be real and they're going to be still a threat and you still can die. The only the thing is just that the, they're selling the revival items. Right, yeah. And you so only you get can, one. Yeah, so, so. so basically you, you can you can buy insurance to uh, to stay alive. But if you don't have insurance or if you freaking... Yeah, it's just if you don't have the insurance, then uh, you could still very well die. Right. So it, the, the risk is still there. Um, it it kind of reminds me of the insurance in EVE on, on your ships and then, uh, you know, commit insurance fraud. But the, you can't really commit insurance fraud with your own life, I guess. <laughs> you either get resurrected or uh, you, you don't if you don't have the item. Which, uh, uh, yes, let's just test this item on... Beretta, and not, I don't know, something not her. <laughs> yeah, to, to be fair, like they brought up, she's one of the only people like in Tempest that like, even if you kill her, she's not actually dead because demons aren't physical beings. Right. All, all she'd do is just get thrown back to the demon realm and potentially need to be resummoned. Right, which just kind of weirded me out with the fact that she's inhabiting that golem's body and the golem body disappeared and then she came back with the golem body. I think it would have made more sense if the body just was like, it's no longer inhabited and they just had her just pop back awake. You know what I mean? Like, oh, I've re-inhabited the body because I'm alive again. Uh, but... That's nitpicking, I guess. It's not really that big of a deal, but again, just for factual whatever, Rimuru summoned her, and she's inhabiting this golem body that Rimuru created. Just like yeah. kind of like what Trainee's doing right now, Rimuru created a body for her, and her spirit's inhabiting that body. Though it looks like her still, but still. This golem that is Veretta was a construct, you know? So the construct disappearing when she dies is kind of weird, unless it was like destroyed, which maybe Trainee's spell destroyed the golem and the, I guess you could argue that if somebody dies with the armband on that they'll come back with all their equipment. I, I guess maybe in this case, her body is her equipment and that's how the resurrection it, it, magic works. It's probably more to do with the fact that it's still technically a body her soul is inhabiting, so like, even though the body is artificial, it's still considered to be her body and part of the resurrection. Right. So, that is, you know, but, what it is. 
but yeah, either way, it, it's just shenanigans with her being a demon, and the fact that demons themselves are energy beings and don't actually have physical forms normally. Right. The, like, Diablo and any of the other demons, or Guy, or whoever, who are going around and actually interacting with the physical world do so because similar to Preta, they just, they have physical bodies that they've bound themselves to. Like, that's... Pretty much every plot so far involving Violet is her minions going out of their way to secure a human for her to possess. Right. Which is like a limited time only thing as we saw in uh, Coleus and whatnot. Which uh, they did bring up uh, that one uh, nation that uh, Rimuru saved in that other movie from the uh, uh, poison stuff. So because hmm. <laughs> uh, they were the, like the iron country, like they had an inordinate amount of iron. Like that was a thing they brought up that I forgot who brought it up. It was maybe it was Diablo or somebody. One of Rimuru's subordinates was like, yeah, they have a ton, a literal ton of iron. Like their entire mountain range there is just like all iron. Nothing but it's something crazy like that. Yeah, so, the problem is just that the mine was contaminated. Yeah, it's like we have all this iron, but uh, we can't mine it. <laughs> but now they can. So now they can import iron and make money and his as any Minecraft player knows, or just doesn't even have to be Minecraft, whatever game that you collect resources in, in even in real life, you never have enough iron. So that's just how it is. <laughs> Again, I've been playing Once Human a lot lately, and even once you get up into the, like the higher tech aluminum and tungsten and stuff like that, you still use steel. Yep. Just so. not quite, a, just not quite as much anymore. But you still always need iron. Yep. Never not enough iron. So, anyway, uh, this was an interesting uh, design, you know, of the labyrinth. Veldora now has a place to live. You know, I brought up the fact that they're just going to put him at the as the last boss, and lo and behold, there he is. Um, it'll probably be something like what we mentioned last week, like the Odin fight in uh, World of Warcraft Legion, where you, you know, fight him, and he's just like, all right, you've done enough damage to me, or whatever it may be, to win the fight, because nobody's going to beat Veldora. <laughs> there there has to be a win condition otherwise that's kind of uh that's kind of boring <laughs> so uh it'll be interesting to see if they uh if he use like goes into like uh you know some adventurer group that goes down there and like actually challenges veldora but uh one would assume that you'd probably have to be on like i don't know maybe like the average paladin of the holy order is level to even get relatively close to Beldora's floor with how uh, how much magicules are being put out in the uh, lower floors, so it will be a thing to see if uh, they go into that at all um, in the main series or potentially Slime Diaries, something like that. Um, but hey, Beldora now is a place to let loose and uh, not have to suck it in constantly. Yeah, that, that was what I was, keep saying about the fact that I knew it was going to happen this episode. That was the thing that I knew was coming eventually was that uh... Veldora would be the boss of the dungeon and that he'd finally get to let his aura out and that would be what causes the monsters in the dungeon. Right. Which, uh, I don't know if they're going to go into that much detail, but you figure he's not going to want to be waiting around there the whole time, like waiting for adventurers to show up. So uh, maybe it'll be like, hey, somebody's reached the 95th floor. Uh, you might want to be on standby. <laughs> Well, basically, the idea is just that's his house now. He just he lives down there, and that's where he hangs out and fucks around with his manga and lets his. That's where he can let loose his aura just freely, and it's just any time he wants to come out, he has to you know revert back to his human form and suck his aura in and then just go out to do the specific thing he wants to do and then go back home. Right, which uh, as we saw, him going home is probably easy as this. It's probably tailored to wherever the heck you live individually, like Sophia here just, you know, taps that door and boom, they're all teleported to Mia, which is uh, the floor that Romigris created for all the uh, Eurasianian refugees. So temperature mm -hmm. controlled, you know, all the amenities that anybody could want in a uh, whatever that we didn't get uh, the explanation to last episode because it was super secret because they were going to explain it this time and i guess it's called small world so uh yeah 
But we did find out that it is limited. She can't have like natural disasters going on without outside help, as pointed out by Malim there at the uh, last second of it's, the episode. <laughs> it's not that she can't manifest things like volcanoes and stuff like that into the labyrinth. It's just that it costs would cost her an extremely large amount of energy to maintain. Right. Which, uh, since she was once again early in her uh, reincarnation cycle, uh, she probably doesn't have that much power at the moment. So, <laughs> plus, you know, a hundred floors is still a lot. Which, uh, mm -hmm. you know, keep keeping something like that together still just further proves how much power she actually does wield. Which is probably modified by interdimensional shenanigans with her actual, you know, ability small world. But still, uh... <laughs> You probably have to be bare minimum an awakened demon lord to do something like this. So yeah, it's like her her skill let, is what lets her do this. It's like she's doing it through the skill. It's just it's still something that like she needs to actually have the power to build and maintain the pocket dimension. Yep. Which, uh, as we saw, um, like any good uh, roguelite dungeon, uh, it's never the same because they're just going to swap the floors all over the place. And when you got 100 floors, that is a uh, a pretty good amount of possibilities in ordering. So uh, it, it'll be a minute before uh, anyone sees all the floor combinations. So yeah, um, about what we expected for like a, like a setup episode. Uh, apparently, uh, the Roman Colosseum can be built in almost a day. <laughs> Well, when when you have enough help, <laughs> yeah, a month in this case. Yeah, it's like this. This should have taken years, but uh, nah, it's gonna take about a month. Which uh, getting something like this done before a major festival like they're gonna hold hold here soon is a a pretty big deal, Tom. So uh, yeah, um, this is basically for real world purposes. Based on what they were saying, um, your average NFL football stadium size. You know, they said 50,000. So think, I don't know, pick your favorite NFL franchise. It's going to be that big. We all know how long that takes in real world time. Like take, for example, SoFi Stadium down here in Southern California. That took them and they got set back by like crazy torrential rain and stuff. But that got, you know, that took like five, six, seven years, whatever. This, they got this up in under a month. Now, to be fair, they have magic. <laughs> They've got magic, they've got high orcs, they've got a refugee workforce that is, like, basically the entire capital of Eurozania's population. Right. And it's not like uh, when, say, pick in any professional sports stadium is built anywhere, um, unless it's for the Olympics, you don't have hundreds of thousands of people working on it. You know what I mean? <laughs> So, uh, when you got magic and literally possibly tens of thousands of, uh, workers working on it, not around the clock, and obviously reasonable, they pointed that out. It's like, hey, no, we're, we're stopping for the day at a reasonable time. But, uh, stuff gets done faster when you have, you know, more people and all of them are competent. So, that's what it is. <laughs> you could knock out a stadium in a month's time, sure, why not? With, uh, all those advantages. So, um, yeah, that's, uh, that's going to be pretty impressive. Uh, we, we kind of see that, uh, in the intro with like, uh, Soka doing like the, uh, opening ceremony thing that will probably be, uh, how they, uh, like welcome everybody to Tempest as like the inaugural event kind of deal. Um, all that stuff we see in the intro and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So that should be neat, but, um, yeah, you know, solid episode setting up all this stuff, um. We, we got, you know, a stereotypical Veldora moment. I mentioned it's like, are you sure you guys want to be standing there when he's going to, you know, just unload the magic fuels phrasing first boom? But, uh, yeah. <laughs> As you can see, you know, probably shouldn't have been standing there. But, uh, either way, um, we got that moment. We got the other Veldora moment of, like, him getting a manga library, the uh, likes that, um, you know any random manga or anime nerd would have uh, wanted to be part of. You know what any nerd would not want to be part of? It's the Crunchyroll player. Just saying. <laughs> Every time. 
you know, uh, e even when I'm using it, it's just like, you're clearly not there. So we're going to reset the ep episode. You know, you're, you're jumping around and, and looking at stuff. You're clearly not here. You're clearly AFK, right? So we're going to just kick it right back to the beginning. There's no possible way you're there when you're moving around. You're interacting with the player. You're clearly not there, though. I, I got I got nothing for Crunchyroll these days with all their changes that they've made. So, you know, you, you, we, we, we might have to go back to the high seas here. <laughs> but uh yeah it, it was interesting you know setting up this kind of stuff um you know yeah i will be interested to see it. they do have something sort of like this in uh the sakai's memories game with the uh um the uh what is that thing called the uh the isis tower uh is that, is that a loop loop yeah loop loop um so <laughs> yeah, it'll be interesting to see if they add something sort of similar to this as like a as a, like a sequel or something to it that um, is like more roguelite in the sense of say like um, that isn't uh, as because loop loop in the game you have to wait quite some time to move a tile you know what I mean loop loop uh, also isn't uh, random in any way yeah it's it's all the same it's just it's one set tower all the tiles are always the same you can re-challenge them and stuff like that but moving each square because it's like a hexagonal grid uh to get to the boss uh you know in typical gotcha game fashion it takes time for you to replenish whatever but uh in the later floors it literally takes you weeks to get through one floor based on uh how quickly your uh how quickly it just like replenishes the currency so it'd be interesting to see if they did something kind of like take ZZZ, for example, uh, the latest Hoyoverse game. Their roguelite, you can challenge it as many times as you want, uh, you know, for very minimal rewards. But uh, still, there, you don't have to wait on like a time-gated currency kind of thing. So in general, Hoyo likes to make it where you're still capable of like doing content without gating. So the, they generally... they they rather than gating content they gate materials so like you can do hollow zero as many times as you want but uh you uh start getting little to no materials after you've done your specific amount for the week right or like you can fight the notorious hunt bosses three times a week for materials or you can keep fighting them as many times as you want afterwards just to like practice the fights but you just don't get materials from them anymore right so uh, i'd imagine something like that might be coming to that game just based on uh something that you could see as like missing from that product which they have ideas it is what it is um but yeah pretty much about what we expected for something like this it had its moments you know Rami Riss doing Rami Riss things, and then we are left on the lame bomb here at the end with the. Uh... I don't know why I thought this world was devoid of dragons for some reason, but it's not. Uh, I guess when we think dragons, we think like the like the four main like calamity class, like strongest in the world being dragons. Uh, yeah, I'm sure yeah. there are other dragons out that are out there that are just like, you know, like the sky dragon. We we saw that guy. You know, yeah, no, uh, it, it's just there's different classifications of dragons, like there's different classifications of demons and demon lords and stuff like that. It's just Beldora and them are the true dragons, which are like the freaking uh, immortal pinnacles of dragons that like are the apex basically of this entire world. Yep, so yeah, as it stands, solid enough. It'll be interesting to see, uh, now that Malay is back, what uh, what she's gonna be doing. Um, I believe in that uh, the first core intro, she was literally uh, like fishing for dragons, basically. And there was like a dragon in the background, like looking at her like, oh boy. <laughs> Hell yeah, like the original story for why Malim even became like one of the first awakened demon lords was because her pet dragon died and she was trying to find a way to revive it. Right. And she just kind of happenstance stumbled into the awakened demon lord process while she was free and trying to find a way to bring her pet back right which uh, ended up very uh, full metal alchemist apparently kind of a bummer yeah. so uh anyway 
that's all I got for this week. Solid enough. It'll be interesting to see what uh, Malame has cooked up here. Um, there's definitely some uh, interesting stuff coming with uh, some of the other factions as well. Um, we also got Kurobe's, uh, um, what he, you know, what he, his gift was this episode as well. They kind of snuck that in there with all the uh, cool stuff that he's been making for, uh, for the dungeon. Um, his uh, Mastercraft ability, which means that uh, anything he makes is of rare quality. Bare minimum. <laughs> so. Yeah, so he just inherently makes things at much higher quality than other people. Like, it doesn't matter how much effort he puts in, he's going to still outperform most people. Right. So that's interesting. He's also made some... Uh, what I can only assume, at some point in the future, they really drew uh, attention to these uh, two cursed items. So I assume they're going to come up in the future at some point for some reason. So, yeah. Um, other than that, uh, Rimuru also got a new sword that is going to evolve with him. So uh, uh, we'll be, uh, I'll be interested to see what uh, what comes of that weapon and how often it uh, is kind of showcased. But uh, it will probably become important in the uh, later stages that you know, could involve uh, the angels and that kind of stuff. So, yeah, uh, let's uh, let's not forget this uh, this stuff right here because it was important. <laughs> but it was uh, kind of a small scene in the middle of uh, all the uh, stuff going on with Ramirez and whatnot. But uh, still important because uh, now Kurobe can uh, pump out uh, rare equipment like it's nothing, and uh, you know, on top of him being able to create create a weapon for Rimuru that is. Uh, already better than what he was using before, which was already a pretty solid weapon, so... Basically, the idea is, with his skill, now it's just a... It's basically, he... He builds his super, like, important signature items for select individuals, and in between, like, major commissions like that, he just goes and, like, minimal effort mass-produces rare equipment and stuff like that for them to just throw in the dungeon as fodder items. Right. It's like, hey, can you make this kind of thing for floor 10 and then this the kind of thing for floor 20 and whatnot? <laughs> just it, just increasing levels of uh, good equipment or they could also go, they don't necessarily have to go full quality. They could go like, well, floor 10 has like two rare items, but floor 20 has five. You know? <laughs> so uh, either way, it, it will be interesting to see how, how much, uh, you know, Fuse delves into the... Uh, intricacies of just the world and that kind of stuff uh, because he is slowly building a bigger and bigger world here um, and showcasing literally everything could be an endeavor um, but uh, setting up these kind of things it, at the very least you would hope that uh, you get at least something you know like uh, some adventure gets uh, like a like a random like episode story of how far they go in the labyrinth or something like that uh, whatever it is uh, somebody ch like Rimuru might challenge somebody to do it and you kind of see like how far they get or whatever so that'll be a thing but uh you know that's all i got anything else age i don't know there's also we have to see what maribel's involvement in all this is going to be because we know she's going to be involved well based on like last time we saw her plus the fact that she's uh pretty clearly in the intro lingering amongst uh the civilians right there's also the random guy uh, that it like zooms in on during like the bit where it's showing like the different arena contestants and stuff like that. Who I know he's supposed to be pretty important for something, but I don't really know anything about him. Got it. Alrighty then. Well, we uh, still have plenty of stuff to look forward to this season. Uh, a little over halfway there, so uh, yeah, still got plenty of stuff to get to. So uh, we'll be looking forward to that. So ladies and gentlemen, people of YouTube beyond how you're watching, we always appreciate you stopping by and hanging with us here in the dojo for more anime night in the dojo. And this is Slime, season three, episode 14. Yeah, 14. <laughs> I lost track of everything after we lost uh, part of the schedule last week. So uh, anyway, have a good morning, evening, afternoon, whatever it is for you. Have a good one. See you next time. Hey everyone, Victoria here. If you enjoyed the video, please consider pushing those like and subscribe buttons. Your support is greatly appreciated. Thanks again for your time, and we hope to see you again in the future.